Come on, start. Always when you're in the middle of the road. Wait a minute, I know what this could be. Oh yeah, okay. The distributor. Hey friends, it's Len here from 1A Auto. In this video, we will be talking about ignition distributors. Of course, by the end of the video, if you find that you need any parts, check us out at 1AAuto.com. The distributor itself is made to distribute energy that comes from your ignition coil. It'll come straight through the center of this cap. Inside of the distributor, there will be a rotor that distributes the energy to each one of these little tabs. From there, it's gonna lead to a wire that leads down to the spark plug. Assuming the spark plug's grounded properly into the engine, that's where it'll create spark. The distributor is responsible for making sure each one of the cylinders in your engine gets spark at the proper timing. The purpose of this is to make sure that the compressed air and fuel mixture that's inside of each of your combustion chambers gets that spark and creates combustion at the proper time to create power coming from your engine. Now let's get into it. The first thing I always like to do is have a look at my spark plug wires and what I can see of the spark plugs. What do they look like? Recently replaced in the last 30,000 miles ish or been around for a while. It's just things to note. The next thing that I would do would be to make sure that the engine's cool to the touch. Carefully reach down to my distributor and try to give it a little wiggle from side to side, trying to spin it. If it can twist from side to side, there's a possibility that the timing could be off on your engine. The next thing that I would want to do would be to check for spark. That can easily be done using a spark tester. If you don't have one of these and you happen to have an extra spark plug laying around, you can also test it that way. Now, not everybody is going to either want to or have the ability to be able to do this. If that's the case, just make your way right down to that distributor cap and carefully remove it from the distributor. Let's pop that cap and take a look. When you do this, what we're looking for is any type of damage or cracking. Moisture on the inside or even buildup on the contact points that make their way around and in the center. And why does this matter? Because of energy transference. The energy will come from your ignition coil. After that, it's gonna make its way through this wire to the center of your distributor cap. Underneath that distributor cap, you're going to find the center tab that will make contact with the ignition rotor down under here. At that point, this is going to be spinning around in a circle as the engine's turning over and the energy will come out of this end. At that point, the energy will travel to the proper tab inside of the cap, then making its way toward the spark plug racing to find a ground. Damage can cause moisture inside of your distributor cap. That moisture can cause the energy to get sent to the wrong place or multiple places, weakening the energy sent to the spark plug. Now keep in mind, just because you happen to see moisture inside of your distributor cap, that doesn't necessarily mean that there's damage to the cap itself. It could just be condensation. The distributor itself is mounted directly to the engine. The engine gets hot after it's been running for a little while. You park it, it cools off. You start it up, run it, it heats up again. Heat cycles. When this happens, it's possible for it to create condensation inside of your distributor cap. Or maybe there's buildup. I've seen it dozens of times. Any buildup can cause resistance. If the energy has a hard time trying to get somewhere, it's gonna become weak. We all know how that is. As far as buildup, what you could try to do is gently wipe it off. Once you've done that, use a piece of fine sandpaper or even emery cloth. Try to lightly sand the contact points. You have to be extremely careful when you do this because the more that you try to sand it down, the more damage you could potentially cause, and that might create a gap in between the contact points, in which case you're going to have the same issue as you might have right now. And whenever you're cleaning something like this, never use a flammable or combustible material. If you don't wanna go through the process of cleaning the contact points, you can just get yourself a brand new cap and rotor. The inside of your distributor will have other internal parts that could potentially get damaged by moisture. Looking at this one right here, you can see that you have wiring and you have an ignition control module located right here. Any of this can be affected by moisture. And as you can tell, we even have a little bit of rust buildup. But if moisture did make its way into the distributor and it caused rust or some sort of internal damage to the distributor itself, you're going to want to replace the whole thing with a brand new one. Overall, it's not the hardest job. You just need some basic tools and a timing light. If you do decide you need a distributor or the cap and rotor, 
order them from 1AAuto.com. So here's a quick rundown about replacing your distributor in your vehicle. Start with hand and eye protection. After that, you want to make sure that you have the proper tools and of course a vacuum gauge or a timing light. When you're doing this, you also want to make sure that you know the firing order for the vehicle itself. Go ahead and disconnect that battery. Put it on a charger. Remove the cylinder one spark plug. Rotate the engine crank clockwise to find top dead center. That's when the cylinder one piston is coming up and you can feel a little bit of pressure coming from inside that spark plug hole. Stop when you find that the piston is at the very top. At that point, you want to continue on to marking the spark plug wires to know which wire goes to exactly which cylinder. Remove the wires from each spark plug and then from the ignition coil if it's separate. Disconnect any wiring harnesses from the distributor itself. Take note or a picture of the exact orientation of the distributor base compared to the engine and the rotor to the top of the base. The rotor should be facing directly towards where the cylinder one wire should be. Continue on to removing the mounting hardware holding the distributor to the engine. Remove the distributor and then watch as the rotor spins. That's where you're going to want to align the rotor on the brand new distributor prior to installation. Now that it's out, compare your new distributor to the original. Clean and inspect the mounting hole in the engine where the distributor is going to go. Now it's time to prepare your new distributor for installation. First, remove the cap. After that, continue on by setting the rotor to the same position as where the rotor was on your original distributor. Install the new gasket and slowly slide it down into the hole in the engine, aligning the bottom of the distributor with the oil pump shaft inside the engine. While you're doing this, make sure you're paying attention to the orientation of the base and the rotor. All three of these things need to be properly aligned. Continue on by installing the mounting hardware. You want to make sure you leave it just loose enough that you can carefully spin that distributor base. Continue on to installing your distributor cap. Replace or swap out the wires one at a time, being sure that each wire leads directly to the proper cylinder spark plug. At that point, continue on to reattaching the battery. Try starting the vehicle. If it starts, let it run until it gets up to normal operating temperature and then prepare to time the engine. If it doesn't start or run, make sure you double check your wires and the firing order. Assuming that looks good, you should try slowly spinning the base one way or the other while attempting to start the vehicle. The base might be misaligned to the point that your timing might be way off, in which case your engine might not start or run right. Once it's running and up to normal operating temperature, continue on by using a vacuum gauge or your timing light to properly time the engine. Now I hope you liked the video, I hope you found it interesting. If there was something in this video that you found was interesting or you think somebody else might find it interesting, go ahead and share it with them. It would mean everything to me. If you like the video or even love the video, go ahead and smash on the like button for me mean the world. While you're at it, go ahead and subscribe, ring the bell. That way there you, all of your friends, can be kept up with all of our latest content. Thanks.